What's up guys, it's Zach McCarley with another installment of The Basics of Strongman. Today we're gonna to be talking about how not having a gym, starting out in your strongman journey, isn't necessarily a problem. You don't need the specialized equipment. Um, what you need is a correct attitude. And I'm gonna tell you a quick story about myself that demonstrates the kind of attitude that I think a lot of people should have, uh, but it seems that it is not a super common attitude to have, which is if you wanna do something, and it is at all within your power to even attempt it, just go for it, right? So, you know, given you're not gonna hurt other people and blah, blah, blah. Okay, anyway, story time. So this is a story about me getting into strongman. I uh, was sitting down over the summer and, you know, watching ESPN, flipping through the channels and I see strongman. And I'm watching these events one by one. And at this point I had been lifting for a couple years and I'm seeing, the, I'm seeing the deadlift. Whoa, you know, a couple, you know, several hundred pounds. Wow, it's really impressive. I'm seeing the yoke. Whoa, 600 pounds. Like I, I kind of know what about 600 pounds would feel like on my back. And I'm seeing the overhead press and I'm seeing it's like 240 to start. And there's like four implements. And I'm like, 240, that's not, that's not, you know, I could do that. And every single one of these events, I'm thinking I could do that. Man, I could do that, man, I could do that. And then it was just like, it all hit me at once. And I was like, why don't I do that? I'm going to do that. And so I get ready for the old, old, <laughs> old fashioned sentence. I hopped on my bicycle and uh, rode down to my local public library where I accessed the dial up internet because I did not have internet at my home at the time and uh, looked up strongman competitions and found North American strongman and looked through all of their contests. And there was only two in the next six months on the West Coast, two contests. And the first one I see is in California. I'm like, that's way too far. Like, I live in Washington. I was living in Maple Valley, Washington. And it's like, that's way too far. I, I just can't do that, right? And uh, I go to the next one. It's Corvallis, Oregon. And I'm like, oh, man, you know, I, I think I could do that. I think, you know, that's like a, that's a good track. It's like probably six hours, I think, five or six hours or something. But I could do that. I could do that. And so I look up the entry form and there's a phone number and a contact name, Grant Higa. And I say, I'm, I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call him, we're gonna chat. You know, it's gonna be great. Like I, I got this ready. I'm like, you know, I call him and I'm like ready. I'm like, hey, my name is Zach, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm ready for this. And it goes to voicemail. I'm like, oh shit, like. <laughs> Hey, my name's Zach, uh, I'm 18, I live in Maple Valley, Washington. I saw your contest in Corvallis is coming up and I wanted to talk to you to see if I could sign up because I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this, but I want to compete and I want to lift and I want to do the sport. Okay, here's my phone number. Hope to talk to you soon, bye. <laughs> Just super, super awkward call. And uh, he calls me back the next day. I answer the phone. And I'm like, hey, this is Zach. And he's like, hey, this is Grant Higa. Uh, did you say you're from Maple Valley, Washington? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm from Maple Valley, Washington. He's like, bro, I live in Maple Valley, Washington. And I'm like, what? Where you live? I'm right by Four Corners. He's like, bro, I live like half a mile from Four Corners. <laughs> and like, it just, it just so happened that we lived really close to each other. We lived about a mile and a half away. So that was like impossibly convenient, right? We wound up meeting up the next week. Uh, the contest was like not even a month away. So I was ready to go there without the opportunity to even touch these implements and just compete, just not even having a chance. Um, but by reaching out, I found out that there was a resource in my community already. And he was very kind, took me directly under his wing. Um, you know, I, I could never thank him enough for that. Uh, he, he was the perfect mentor for me. And, you know, I, that happened because I tried, I think is the, uh, you know, the moral of the story as it were. And so I think with, with something like worrying about if you have equipment to train on, things like this, I think that you need to worry about your mindset first. You need to worry about if this is something you want to do, because if it's not something you want to do, that's fine. But if it is something you want to do, then do it, you know? So let's look at this, getting started thoughts, okay? So some thoughts on getting started. 
All right, I don't have equipment, right? You're starting out, you don't have equipment. That's super understandable. It's a very common position for a lot of people. A lot of people live in the middle of nowhere and don't have access to that kind of stuff. So there's two routes you can really take with that. I don't have equipment, so I'm gonna give up, right? Well, I, I made you up a little pros and cons, okay? So let's talk about the two options real quick and then we'll go through the pros and cons. So I don't have equipment, so I give up. Right, that's one way you can go. Or I don't have equipment, but if I try, at least I have a chance, right? So you can give up. And some of the pros, I mean, there's some real pros to giving up right away. Um, you get to be right, okay? You get to be right. You don't have a chance because you didn't try, so you were right. If that's important to you, then good. Um, also, you can move on to giving up the next thing really quickly. It's a very efficient turnover process. Um, or, you know, and you could also avoid some of the cons of, you know, actually trying, but some of the cons of giving up so early, I think, are relevant. Um, the first con is that you get to be right, right? So it's a win, but it's also a loss. Like, you get to be right about something negative. Um, you also have to deal with the what ifs. Like, what if I would have tried? What, what if you have a lot of potential in this sport? What if you had a lot of potential in this sport and you just left it? What if you potentially passed up on a passion that could have been your life's passion as far as sport is concerned? It is a fun sport and it's a great community. Um, and you don't have to be perfect to compete or even be competitive. So moving from, on from, so I'll give up, and going into, but if I try, at least I have a chance. Some of the pros are discovery. You get to discover a new sport. You get to discover a new community. You can discover friends, uh, lifelong friendships, really, and relationships. I still keep in contact with a few people um, from that original training crew. The person that taught me to load stones, Pete Markov, I, con I still contact him probably at least monthly. Um, you know, I love him. I love my training partners that I had. I wish that that could have lasted forever, like truly. Um, maybe I'll get into more stories sometime, but like we used to train in this old warehouse and it was some rocky shit, like, it, like, like Rocky Balboa type, you know, like it was, it was just so epic. Um, it, it was just amazing. Anyway, maybe another time with story time, but. Getting into uh, some more of the pros for at least giving it a try is uh, you get a chance at enjoyment, right? So you get the potential to find something that could be healthful for you to do and something that's enjoyable and something that you know can be ever changing. That's one thing that I found about Strongman immediately that I loved was uh, I came from a, um, well, like football and wrestling. And then I did actually a powerlifting meet and I trained a little bit of weightlifting before I went into strongman. And the, my issue with powerlifting was that it just didn't have enough variety for me. I was getting very bored um, and frustrated, actually. I did not like the limitations that were brought about by uh, just competing in three different lifts. And in strongman, there's well over 60. Like, good luck mastering them all. Uh, if you have any kind of <laughs> like uh, issue with getting bored about movement styles and modes, then strongman is a very good candidate for a strength sport for you. Um, you also get to avoid the what ifs, right? You don't have to ask yourself, well, what if I would have done this? Like you actually get to try, okay? And then let's talk about some of the cons. Like, you might be let down by the sport. Okay, you can move on, right? Or you might feel like you let down yourself. Maybe you shouldn't have had as high of expectations, right? Um, you can get injured. It's not a super safe sport, but I mean, life's not very safe. So you kind of got to live it every once in a while. And if you're careful, you can make it into a safe training modality. Uh, cost, it can be expensive. Um, you know, for a sport that is a hobby and for a weekend competition, just the traveling and lodging and entry fees can, you know, probably like a thousand dollars per contest 
Uh, unless you're driving, staying one night, not having to hit 24 hour weigh-ins and um, just paying entry fee. Like if you have a local contest, you might be able to get away with like $20. Um, if it's a really small contest, non-sanctioned. If it is sanctioned and it's within driving distance from your home, not counting gas, uh, like $150 maybe, but it's the lodging and the travel expenses that really add up for the cost factor. Um, you know, in, in summation, in summary, just try new things, man. I feel like there's an underlying note here, you know, People should get a little tougher, I think, a lot of times mentally. I think that it's important to try new things. It's important to get out of your comfort zone. And so what if you're not set up the best for any certain uh, you know, outcome that you may want if the options are to try or to not try at all, then try. What do you have to lose, right? So in trying, in the spirit of trying, next time we're gonna be talking about the training split types. So there's two main types and uh, we will get into that next time. So thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, uh, please feel free to share it with people that may be interested in the sport of strongman. And if you guys have any questions or want me to talk on any basics or overall um, just topics that don't have enough information in the sport of strongman, please comment or message me or contact me in some way. And I would love to address those questions for you. So catch you guys in the next one.